everyone, it's Olivia from Girly Bunches and in this week's video I'm going to be showing you how to do the basket weave sti uh, stitch. Now I have done a video on this previously but I had to take it down unfortunately because even though back in the day when I was buying some copyright free music, it turns out it wasn't copyright free so I had to take that video down unfortunately. So I'm re redoing my video, I'll probably put a little insert here of my old video. Um, you can really customise this, the way the pattern works, you can make these um, vertical stripes thinner or wider or the, make the horizontal stripes thinner or wider, it really is up to you. Um, it's a really versatile pattern and as you can see it looks great from both sides so we like those sort of projects and stitches don't we. So I'm going to get on and show you how I made this basket weave stitch. Right, so I'm going to be using some double knit yarn here and I'm using a 4mm hook and um, with my 4mm hook and my double knit yarn I've started off with um, a base chain. Now your base chain will need to multiples be multiples of 8 plus 4. Okay, so anything, um, so if you're working um, in a flat piece like this, you want multiples of 8 plus 4. So here I have 28 stitches which is um, so there's three multiples of eight and then four extra stitches. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start off with treble into the um, fourth chain from the hook. So we've got one, two, three, four. There's our fourth chain. And then we're going to do our treble. So remember I'm British and I use British terminology so you may know that as a double. And with all my videos up, up here and in the description box I will put a link to a video explaining the difference in terminology. So those first three chains there are going to become our first treble. And then what you need to do is just work one treble into each of the chains all the way to the other end and that's all you do for the first row. And I will come back once I've got all the way to the other end. Right, so we have worked all the way across to the other side and now we're going to um, do two chains and then we're going to turn the work so we're now going to work in the opposite direction. Now we are going to work trebles um, around front and back posts and I'll come to that in a moment but um, and normally we would do three chains to replace a treble but because when we do a um, a treble around a post stitch around this treble from the previous row it um, shortens the actual stitch so it won't be as long as these stitches here so that's why I'm only doing two chains which would be the same as a half treble before I start working the rest of my stitches so it's just good to remember that at the end of each row you either want so you want to start each row with two chains or you want to finish it with a half treble and that will be on the same for every row that we do so regardless of what you're doing in the pattern it will start with two chains and end with a half treble so onto the actual pattern, what we're going to do is we're going to work a treble, so you put the yarn over your hook like you would normally do and we're going to work this as a front post stitch. So to work a front post stitch basically we want to push this stitch forward. I'm just going to go over it quite quickly just to show you but I do have in-depth videos which I will link up here and in the description box down below. And you just put your hook down between those two stitches there round the back and then back up to the front again and then you just work your treble like you normally would so you're not working the stitch into the top of the previous stitch like we would normally do we would normally put the hook through the top of the stitch we're actually putting the hook down in between the stitches around the back and then to the front and then working the stitch around that treble which we're actually calling a front uh, a post and as you can see the stitch is raised and if I turn it over you can see we have this detail where the top of the stitches have been pushed back. So this is a front post stitch, a front post stitch where it's lifting the stitch upward and what we need to do is four of those. So I've done two, I just need to do two more. If you're new to crochet just take it a bit slowly, it's a bit different but actually it's quite easy because you're not having to put your hook into anything, you're just putting your hook in between the two stitches, round the back and then up the front. If I just turn that over you can see what I mean by round the back. And there's my four stitches. So we've got one, two, three, four. 
Now, the next four stitches are going to be work, worked around the back post. So again, put the yarn over the hook and this time we're going to come in from the back, in between the stitches, across the front and then down around the back again. So you can see now, that the, before you could see the hook going across but now you can't see the hook because it's on this side. So you just pull, so you put the yarn over the hook and you pull it through and now you're going to finish working the stitch around the back. Can you see the difference now that we have with the stitch? But if you turn it over, it looks like we've worked a back post stitch here and it looks like we've worked a front post stitch here. Okay, so it's it's going to be the, the reverse on the reverse side. So <laughs> the reverse effect on the opposite side, that's probably a better way of saying it. So we need three more of those. So again, yarn over the hook. In between those stitches, those trebles from the previous previous round, up across the front and then down in between the next two stitches. Grab the yarn, put it through and you're going to be working around the back here so if you just need to tip it down if it makes it easier for you and you just do your treble as normal. And I'll do that two more times from the back, across the front, down the back, grab the yarn and then work the treble and then one more time and this one's probably a little bit more tricky because you have to pull it across the front of that other stitch but it's you know just a little bit of practice so there we go, we've got one, two, three, four front post stitches worked and then one, two, three, four back post stitched, stitches worked. And if I just turn it over, you'll see how they look, it's the reverse of what we've just got on this side. So we need to finish the row doing four front posts, four back posts, four front posts, four back posts. So I'll start with my front post again so I'm going to go down from the front across the back and then up again and again we need to do these in groups of four stitches so there's my next four stitches and then back post so we come in from the back across the front down the back grab the yarn pulling it across the front, you can just see the top of the hook going there, round to the back and then completing the stitch around the back of the post. And there's four of those completed. So now we're going to do front posts, <clears throat> and then we should have five stitches left, one, two, three, four, five, which is great because now we're going to do four back post stitches. Sorry about my squeaky chair. <laughs> and then on the very end stitch, we're just going to do that half treble that I, I said about at the beginning, just into the top of that third chain there. And you just finish that off like so. So if I just have a little look of what we've got here, it's probably a little bit difficult to see because we haven't really got the pattern going, but you can see we've got raised stitches there and the back post stitches are raised on the other side. Chain two and turn your work. So we need to do exactly the same thing as we did at the start of this round. So we're doing four front post stitches. And here again, you just want to see where your stitches are and you just put your hook down in between them. You can have a look on the back to see where you're going and just work four front post stitches. 
So we're now working our third row, but the pattern um, excludes the very first row that you did. So we will be doing three rows where we start with the front post stitch. And then once we've done the three rows here, so we've actually got, um, so one, two, three, so I need to do another row of this front post stitch where we start with the front post. And then when we go to do the, uh, the fifth row in total, but the actual, the fourth row in the pattern, we will start with a back post stitch. I know that sounds confusing, and I will explain what I mean when we get to it. Okay, so I've done four back, um, front post stitches, now I need to do four back post stitches there. So you just put your hook from the back, across the front, grab the yarn, and then work the stitch. So we want four, so that's two, three, and four. So I'm going to repeat this to the, to the end. So that's front post, back post, and I'll come back to you when I get down to here. There we go. I've completed the row and I just want to do my half treble at the end of my row. So into the top of that two chains from the previous row, I'm just going to do a half treble, which you may know as a double crochet, I think. Half double crochet. <laughs> okay, so I've got two rows of my pattern completed and this first row is a starter row so you don't include that as part of the pattern. So I've got one, two rows done. And I just need to do one more row where I do two chains, turn and I'm going to start with four front post trebles. Exactly the same thing as I did for the last two round rows. Um, one more, where I start with four front post trebles and then I start working my four back post trebles. Remember to take the time just to see where your two stitches are and you come up between them across the front and down the back, grab the yarn and work your treble. Okay, so I'm gonna come back once I've got to the end of the row but you can start to see the pattern forming quite nicely there. So I've completed my row and I did, as you can see it's really taking shape. So if I hold it this way you can see what I mean about the, um, the stitches being front post and back post. So you've got this sort of definite um, wiggle which is exactly what we need. And now what we're going to start doing is doing the opposite of what we've done for the last three rows. So remember this first row is um, our starting row and doesn't count as part of the pattern. Then I've worked three rows here. So it's one, two, three, and there's the stitches from the, the very first row. I've done one, two, three stitches, rows of stitches on top of this row, which is our first row. So we've got four all together. So the fifth row will now start doing the reverse of what we did here so that we get the effect of the basket weave. So chain two to start off your row, one, two and turn. So we started off with front posts. Now this time we're going to start off with four back post stitches. So you're just going to put your hook in between that um, last stitch that you did and the treble, if I get that to focus, and you're going to go down, grab the yarn and work the stitch at the back of the um, stitch below. And then again, because we want four of these. And now we're getting the opposite effect where it's pushing the top of those stitches forward to give us those lines that go across here, which give us the effect of a weave. Okay, so I've done my four back post stitches. Now I'm gonna do four front post stitches. So down from the front, up through the back, and work the stitch. And again, we want four of those. And now you can see how this goes across and that goes over. Give us that lovely basket weave effect. So again, now we need to do four back posts. So up through the back, across the front and work the stitch around the back, 
four of those again. And now we're going to work four front posts. And then we're going to work four back posts. And then we're going to finish off with four front posts. So before we were ending the row with four back posts and now we're ending the row with four front, front posts. <laughs> so you can just see it's alternating. And then a half treble into that second chain, like so. Okay, so we need, to, I've done one row and we need to do two more rows of that where we start with back posts and finish with front posts. So two chains, turn, and then we're going to do our back posts. And then we're going to do four front posts. So I'm going to finish this row, which is my second row, and then I'm going to do a third row, and then I'll come back. But there we go, that's my third row of my second phase of the pattern completed. So I've done three rows of the pattern here, and then three rows of the reverse of the pattern. And then you would just continue now working the, these first three rows again. So chain two, turn, and then you'll work um, front post stitches this time. And same principle as before you work four of those and then do four back post stitches and you would do three rows of that where you start with the front post stitch okay i'm just going to do a few more rows and i'll be back in a second so there we go i've completed a few more rows of the pattern as you can see it's really um textured and lovely but yeah i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial i'd love it if you gave me a thumbs up um if you did if you didn't or you have any questions why not pop me a comment in the uh, comments box down below and uh, i will do my best to get back to you obviously i don't get back to people straight away because um i get quite a few comments but i do try to go through them every couple of weeks sort of clear all the, the comments across all my videos so um eventually you will get a hello from me <laughs> i do try to do that um yeah so um if you haven't subscribed, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That would be cool if you did. And uh, I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.